Hello, it's Alex, the Bookubus. Today I am going to be sharing a book haul and it's a, I think about 60 odd books so it's probably going to be a somewhat lengthy video so yeah grab a drink, grab a snack, get comfy and I'm going to go through a bunch of books I'm really excited about and I'm really excited to share them with you. So the reason that I've acquired so many books <laughs> over the past couple of months is that it was my birthday back in March so some of these were birthday gifts and then there's also been a few library book sales that I have been to recently and I have had some really good luck with. So lots of great books to talk about, lots of amazing covers, plenty of vintage goodies, paperbacks from hell, yeah just lots of great stuff here so yeah enough rambling. So first up I have a copy of Live Girls by Ray Garten which was very very kindly sent to me by one over at Plague by Visions. I had sent him a couple of books I had duplicates of recently and yeah we were talking about Ray Garten he had a copy of this and it was the edition that I really wanted so yeah this was really awesome <laughs> to receive. I am very much looking forward to reading it. It's a vampire novel, if you couldn't guess, and I absolutely love this cover. I think it's stunning. And yeah, this one just looks like a really good time. I'm looking forward to reading this one soon. And not only did he send me that, but he also sent me this little bat fellow. Look at him. How cool is he? I hope this is coming across well on camera because I absolutely love this little guy and thank you to Caleb for coming up with the best name ever, Count Rockula. Yeah, this is just such a wonderful and thoughtful gift. So thank you ever so much, Juan. And moving on to some birthday books, I got Season of the Witch by Charlie Jacob. I have been really wanting to read more of her work since I read and loved this symbiotic fascination. And yeah, I got this for my birthday and have I have already read it <laughs> and I loved it. This is, yeah, quite a wild one, but yeah, it was just absolutely my cup of tea. Uh, yeah, dark, disturbing, strange. Yes, all of that good stuff. So I'll be talking about this a little more in my uh, April reading wrap up. But yes, this one was fantastic. I got a copy of Toady by Mark Morris. This is one I've been wanting to read for quite a while and I am very excited to have a copy. This is a bit of a chunky one and it is, I believe, a coming of age story about a group of boys and it's set in the UK as well. Uh, Mark is a British author and uh, yeah, this one just seems absolutely perfect for summertime so I'm hoping to pick it up in a couple of months. So yes, very happy to have this one. I also got Last Days by Brian Evanson. This is another one that I've been really wanting to read for ages, so I'm really happy to finally have a copy. And all I really know about this one is that I think it has something to do with a cult, and I think there might be amputations involved, if I'm remembering correctly. So yeah, I think it's supposed to be pretty weird and I am excited to read it. My husband found me a few Christopher Pike books in a thrift store and he snapped them all up for me. So first couple are The Cold One and The Season of Passage. And I do already own these actually, but I will compare them to the ones I currently have and see which are in better condition and then yeah keep keep whichever ones are in the best condition and then the other ones I will pass along to someone else or donate back to the thrift store or something. 
But yeah, I've been curious to read some of Christopher Pike's adult novels, so I definitely need to dive into them at some point. And then there were three more that he got that I did not currently have. So we have Falling, Sati, and The Blind Mirror. And yeah, I'm not sure whether they are strictly horror or if they're more thriller or something else entirely. I know he does write in kind of different genres. So yeah, if you've read any of these, you'll have to let me know what you thought and if there are, whoops, and if there are any in particular that you would recommend. And he also found me some Sabrina the Teenage Witch books, which are just absolutely amazing. We've got Good Switch, Bad Switch, Sabrina Down Under, and Prom Time. And they all look absolutely wonderful. I remember loving the TV show when it was on. So yeah, I think these books are going to be super nostalgic. And yeah, they just look like a really fun time. So I'm very happy to have these. Okay, so the vast majority of the rest of this haul are secondhand books that I have found at um, a secondhand bookstore and some library book sales. Uh, but before I get into those, there were two more books, uh, two new books that I have, which is very exciting. Um, one of them is Peel Back and See by Mike Thorne. I saw recently that he was selling signed copies of his books and this is his latest short story collection that I have not yet read so I decided to yeah jump on that opportunity and purchase a copy and yeah the fact that it's signed is a really lovely bonus uh, so yeah thank you ever so much Mike and I am very much looking forward to reading this um, I read another short story collection of his Darkest Hours probably a couple of years ago now and uh, also his novel, Shelter of the Damned, which was excellent. So yes, uh, very much looking forward to this one. And I have an arc of Anybody Home by Michael J. Seidlinger. This was sent to me by the publisher, Clash Books. They got in touch with me recently to see if I'd be interested in an advance copy. And I was like, 100% yes please. <laughs> I've heard a little bit about this one, it's a home invasion type story and I think it's been compared to Funny Games which is a fantastic film so yes very excited to be reading this one. Next up is a book I got secondhand online and it is Notice by Heather Lewis. I first heard about this a while ago through one of one's uh, disturbing horror book videos where it was a collaboration of various people, including myself, um, talking about disturbing books. And this was the one that Black Acre Doe recommended, uh, or not recommended in fact, because yeah, he said it was, yeah, just super messed up and awful. And yeah, even though I know this one is not gonna be a fun time, I just, yeah, I don't know, the curiosity was too much for me to not track this down. But it goes for a lot of money online, or at least people list it for a lot of money online. Like, I hadn't seen one less than $100 for, for months and months, whenever the video first went up. And yeah, recently I saw one come up, I think it was for about $15. And I figured, yeah, for a book I'm really super curious about, and one that, yeah, I haven't seen listed for less than $100. I was like, I'm gonna jump on 15 while I have the opportunity. So yeah, this one just sounds awful, but I'm gonna read it and uh, yeah, I'll let you know. Next up are a bunch of books I got from a library book sale. I've got various stacks of books that have just been lying around until I filmed this um, and then organized them on my shelves. So they're still kind of in 
stacks of where I bought them. So this is one particular book sale and the first thing I saw there was Friend by Diana Henstel which is I think like a take on the Frankenstein story and this is one I've been after for ages actually. I don't remember when I first heard about it but it's been on my like Goodreads TBR for probably a good few years and one again <laughs> over at Plague by Visions had seen it on my Goodreads and said you know that he was interested in reading it too and it could be a potential future buddy read so I was like hell yes I just need to get my hands on a copy and then yeah lo and behold actually happened to find one so I was very excited about that snapped it up and this is the book that Deadly Friend the film directed by Wes Craven is based on and I haven't actually seen the film I've been wanting to but I was kind of thinking I might as well read the book before I see the film so yeah <laughs> I was also really pleased to find a copy of The Sluts by Dennis Cooper. This is one I've heard great things about. It is m meant to be pretty messed up from what I understand and definitely sounds like my cup of tea. So yeah, when I saw a copy of this, I grabbed it. And yeah, we'll hopefully get to this one before too long. I found a couple of Sweet Valley like spooky books. So we've got one of the Sweet Valley Kids books, which is Sweet Valley Trick or Treat, and then a Sweet Valley Twins super chiller, The Carnival Ghost. And I've never read any Sweet Valley stuff. Um, I remember seeing the 90s TV show at the time, loved it, but never read any of the books. Uh, but yeah, when I stumbled upon a couple of these spooky ones, I had to snap them up and yeah we'll hopefully get to some of them this Halloween. I did find a couple more which will come later in the haul when I get to them. I found a couple more kids books as well which look really fun. The Ghost of Ernie P by Betty Renwright. I know she is quite a famous name for like middle grade horror stuff and yeah spooky mystery stuff but I've never read any of them so I was pleased to find this one and yeah it might be another Halloween read. I've got a hardback here and it's a bit glary so hopefully that's a bit better but this is Night of the Bat by Paul Zindel and it looks super fun, I love this cover and I think I saw uh, Kelsey over at Slime and Slashes talking about another book of his which she said was really good and quite gory for a kid's book. So yeah, when I saw this one I had to get it. We have Halloweenies written and directed by David Wisniewski. And yeah, look at that cover, it's brilliant. Had to grab it and just check out that author photo. I mean, come on. Yeah, don't know anything about this one, but with a title and a cover like that, I had to grab it. And a hardcover of The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon by Stephen King, which is one of his shorter novels, you know, his books can get pretty lengthy <laughs> and yeah I've heard really good things about this one uh, but have never read it so I was happy to find this copy and yeah we'll definitely give it a go sometime. Okay the next stack is a bunch of books I got from a Half Price Books and it's been ages since I've been to one of their stores um, but my birthday fell on a weekday and I had to work so Instead, the Saturday following my birthday, we kind of treated that as if it was my birthday. And we went out, did some book shopping, had primanties for lunch, which is like a Pittsburgh staple. And it's like, they specialize in giant sandwiches, which have fries in them, as well as a million other fillings. But yeah, fries in a sandwich, highly recommend. And, um, yeah, and then had cake, watched horror movies. It was a great time. 
and I found a good handful of books at the Half Price Bookstore, so that was excellent. And yeah, I do still need to take all the stickers off these, so yeah, apologies for that. <laughs> it's a work in progress. But I found The Ritual by J.N. Williamson. Love that cover with the face and the candle. And this one is something about a creepy teenage boy, I think. Um, yeah, everlasting pain and torture. Okay, cool. Haunted by Tamara Thorne. This is one I've been wanting to read for ages, so I was very happy to find a copy. And I've read one other of her books. It was Moonfall. I read that last October and it was good. So yeah, I'm looking forward to reading more by her. This is some kind of haunted house story and yeah, just sounds great. Nightwing by Martin Cruz Smith. What a great cover and love that title. Vampire bats, grey, evil, clever, deadly. Soon to be a major motion picture. Was it? I don't actually know. The Devouring by Douglas D. Hawke. Another awesome cover. Love those creepy eyes looking out of the door. This one's in really great shape. What you can't see can kill you. A book that I was especially happy to find was Haunter by Charlie Jacob. I already mentioned her previously in this video. And this one is, I don't know whether it's like a direct sequel to this symbiotic fascination or if it's just kind of somehow related. But yeah, I was stoked to find this one. So uh, yeah, I gasped and grabbed it and definitely want to read this before too long because she's definitely like a new favourite author of mine. Whispering Corner by Mark Ronson, which is a pen name, but I'm forgetting the author's real name. But I just loved that spooky cover. I'm guessing it's another haunted house type situation and I believe it's set in the UK. Oh yeah, in Dorset. So yeah, love a bit of British horror or British horror I should say and I've never heard anything about this one but I just had to grab it. Speaking of British horror, I also found this copy of The Rats by James Herbert. And I haven't read this, so I was really happy to find this one. I know it's not like the iconic cover, but it's still a pretty cool one. And yeah, for 198, I wasn't going to argue. Yeah, I think it's still a really cool cover and yeah, design in general. So was happy to find it. And last up from the Half Price Books trip was this pulp his and hers book which was only two dollars i didn't really know what it was but i grabbed it anyway because i was a big fan of pulp i'm going to take it out of the plastic bag so i just snapped it up and when i got it home and was able to have a better look at it i found out that it's basically a promotional book for their album his and Hers when it came out in the US and so it's got like lyrics to the songs and then it's got little bios about each of the band members. Look there's there's Jarvis Cocker himself and yeah I was a big fan of Pulp back in the 90s and I do still love them. I think their music is fantastic so this was a really cool random find and when I had a look online to try and find out a bit more information about it, the only other one I could find was one that had sold on Etsy for like $80 or something. So yeah, was pretty happy to find it for only two. Okay, we're moving back on to some library book sale finds. Here's a couple of hardback books. 
I got this hardback copy of The Godsend by Bernard Taylor. You know I love Bernard Taylor and yeah The Godsend is excellent and I do have a paperback edition of it but why not grab the hardback you know. Um, so yeah that was a really cool find. And then I also found this one, Six Gothic Tales. I mean, just look at that cover. Is that not stunning? I couldn't leave that behind. And this is a Reader's Digest bind up of, like it says on the cover, Six Gothic Tales. So yeah, as you can see, we've got some Daphne du Maurier and yeah, I've heard of Phyllis A. Whitney. I don't think I'm familiar with the others, but yeah what a cool find um, and it was super cheap I don't even remember how much it was now but it can't have been very much so yeah I just thought that was a really cool find and not only that but they also had this one which is another Reader's Digest bind up sorry for the glare but this one is a gothic treasure trove and it has a really great cover as well and this one Let's see, we've got some more Phyllis A. Whitney. And yeah, honestly, I'm not super familiar with these authors, but yeah, had to grab that. And I almost forgot, but they're also illustrated inside. So I think they have, I'm not sure whether that's like the original cover artwork for, you know, when they were released as paperbacks or what, but um, But yeah, I just thought that was really cool. And um, yeah, lots of interesting illustrations in here. And it's the same in the Six Gothic Tales as well. This one seems to be an older edition. Um, but yeah, look at that, how cool. So yeah, pretty cool find. And speaking of Daphne du Maurier, I found this little paperback, Kiss Me Again, Stranger. It says, eight brilliant stories of love, murder, and eerie suspense. So I thought that was a really cool find. And also I was like, there's a couple having sex in a graveyard on the front, sold. So yeah, I think this was originally published in the fifties and this particular edition came out in the 60s uh, but yeah red sprayed edges and all that jazz I found a young adult horror this is an Avon Flair title A Darker Magic by Michael Bedard Bedard love that cover I think it's super cool and yeah this one does have quite a bit of creasing which is a shame but I wasn't going to leave it behind. Come on, I am me. Yeah, something about a creepy magician disappearing children. This one I don't think is horror necessarily, but it does have a great cover. This is Secrets of the Shopping Mall by Richard Peck. And it does say on the spine that it's YA contemporary fiction. Um, but yeah, something about some kids in a mall. So uh, yeah. Why would I not grab that, basically? But yeah, I just love that cover with the creepy mannequins. So good. I was really pleased to find this copy of Twins by Barry Wood and Jack Giesland. This is the book that Dead Ringers, the film directed by David Cronenberg, was based on. And yeah, I love David Cronenberg. <laughs> so I've been really wanting to read this book. I do actually already have a copy, so I have no excuse for having not read it yet. But it's the like movie tie-in edition, whereas this is, I think, the original paperback. So yeah, had to grab it. 
I think it was like 25 cents or something ridiculous. So obviously had to grab that one. And yeah, I don't know if it comes across on the front, but there's like these embossed profiles on the front there. It's pretty cool. I found this copy of The Other by Thomas Tryon. I hadn't seen this edition before. I do have another edition, uh, the white one, that I think was the original one. Um, but yeah, I just thought this one was really cool. So I decided to pick it up as well. I have read this one and I thought it was excellent. I was very pleased to find a Richard Lehman. It's not often that I find his books out in the wild. This is Night in the Lonesome October. And yeah, this one is in excellent shape. Like most of the books I get out in the wild are not <laughs> in very good condition, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. So I normally snap them up anyway, but yeah, this one looks like it's never even been read. So let me know if you read this one, if you think it's one I should pick up sooner rather than later. Falling Angel by William Hjortsberg. I have read this one. I didn't have a copy of it though. I, I think I'd borrowed it from the library on Kindle. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's the book that Angel Heart, the film, is based on. And yeah, it's about a private investigator and he kind of gets embroiled in this, this whole like voodoo and cult stuff. It's really, really good. Um, so yeah, I was just really happy to find a copy that I can keep on my shelves. Shadows by John Saul. And I know I shouldn't have bought any more John Saul because I have a few of his books now and I still haven't read any of them. And I made a promise to myself last year that I would read one of his books and I didn't. So I really have to make that happen this year. And yeah. I, so I have no excuse for like buying another of his books, but I did anyway. And this one sounds like a creepy kid kind of situation, which is always a good time. And last up for that one, I also found some more Sweet Valley books, some of their spooky ones. So I was, yeah, really happy to find some more of these. We've got Sweet Valley Twins, The Haunted House, and then two Sweet Valley Twins and Friends Super Chillers, The Curse of the Golden Heart and The Haunted Burial Ground. I especially like this cover. They're all in Halloween costumes and there's a skeleton and a moon. It's just all going on. So yes, I should definitely try and pick up some of these this October because yeah, for the spooky season, I do like to focus a bit more on like vintage middle grade and young adult. So I think these will be perfect for that time of year. Okay, and last up we have another big stack of books from another library book sale. Um, this one, we went on like the first evening that it opened and it was pretty crazy. There were a lot of people there but I just went straight for the mass market paperback section and basically just like shoved everyone out of my way every time I saw like a vintage horror book. Just kidding, I'm very polite. But um, I did find some amazing vintage horror paperbacks. So I was, yeah, pretty, pretty happy with that trip. And I also, while I was there, bumped into the lovely Olive from A Book Olive. Um, so yeah, it was really nice to see her and she's super lovely and yeah, it was really cool to bump into her again and have a quick catch up. Um, but yeah, onto the books. I'll go through the ones that aren't like adult horror titles. So I only found one young adult title. They didn't really have much there, unfortunately, but I did find this one, Don't Look Behind You by Lois Duncan. These stickers, oh, they're just killing me. So yeah, I really need to um, do a bit of a sticker removal party at some point, because quite a few of these have stickers on. Um, but yeah, I grabbed this one 
pretty much because it was the only young adult title at that particular sale that I found so I wanted to get it. And then I found a few like vintage gothic romances. So we have Castle of Fear by Priscilla Hagen. It says the original title was Mystery at Saint Hilaire. And yeah, I just couldn't resist these ones with really awesome cover art. Yeah, something about secrets in an old castle, mystery and romance. Yeah, sounds great. And also Mystery of the Witch's Bridge. Original title was just The Witch's Bridge <laughs> um, by Barbie Oliver Carlton. Another spooky cover. Evil haunts the Witch's Bridge. Yeah, how could I leave that one behind, honestly? This one is Glimpse into Terror by Clarissa Ross. Sounds like the main character has visions of her own murder. Dun dun dun. So yeah, that one could be a fun one. And Madness by Catherine Hale. And this one does say it's historical romance, which generally isn't my thing, but it does say it's a novel of love and terror on the front. So, and it had a great cover, so I had to grab it. Um, yeah, I love these like creepy hands, rocks coming up out of the sand there. Very cool. And um, this one does sound a bit mad. Some woman and yeah, her brother Nicholas proclaims her a whore and a murderess. So there you go. Madness indeed. This one looked interesting. The Devil's Shadow, the story of witchcraft in Massachusetts by Clifford Lindsay Alderman. Great cover. Someone wrote their name on it. How dare you, Tammy. Um, but yeah, I thought this one looked really cool. So had to snap that one up too. Okay, so now we're onto the last stretch and these are all vintage horror, like paperbacks from hell type of books. I was super psyched to find all of these and they were all only 25 cents each. So I was just beside myself with happiness, quite honestly, at all of these finds. So let's just dive in with this one, Dearest by Peter Loughran. I was, yeah, I gasped when I found this one. I've heard really good things about it and I am very much looking forward to reading it. And yeah, New York Daily News says it wins the prize for weird. So yep, count me in. Uh, yeah, I love this cover. It's all embossed as well. I don't know if that comes across, but Absolutely great. Cries of the Children by Claire McNally. And I'm not sure if it's gonna come across on camera, but it's got this like holographic stuff going on in the words and the lightning stuff. Very cool. And yeah, I read a couple of her books and they've been good, but not great yet. I, yeah, I still would read more of her work. So I'll give this one a go sometime. Ghost Light by Rick Hartala. Not everyone rests in peace. I have only read one other book by this author, but it was good. So yeah, I was happy to find another of his books. Sandman by Linda Crockett. And every time I see this book on my shelf now, I get Crockett's theme stuck in my head, which isn't a bad thing because it's an absolute banger. And if you don't know what Crockett's theme is, I suggest you Google it. You're welcome. Anyway, this one sounds pretty mental. Um, it's about a woman who is a sand, a sand sculptor and she travels to Florida to attempt 
creating the world's largest sand castle. <laughs> like already that's pretty WTF, honestly. Um, but then also there are some swamp dwellers who are out to get her and her son. I mean, obviously it's Florida after all, but yeah, that one sounds bonkers. So pretty <laughs> excited for that. Don't Tell Daddy by Barbara Petty. This one might be more of a thriller than strictly horror, but with that cover, I couldn't resist. And another flipping sticker <laughs> that I'm gonna have to take off. The Vision by Dean Kuntz. And I do already have a copy of this, but this one had a different cover and I absolutely love it. So I couldn't leave it behind. Yeah, I love this bat and he's got like metallic red eyes. And then yeah, this poor woman being attacked by a bat. I mean, yeah, great. And there she is again, that, that bat is really doing a number on her. Minotaur by John Farris and this one the Minotaur you can see the horn and the eye on the front and then it goes across to the back as well yeah pretty cool and it says something about an orgy of revenge which sounds like a great time to me Cold Print by Ramsey Campbell and I believe this is a short story collection of his. And yeah, I really enjoy his work. So I'm always happy to stumble upon more of his books. The House Next Door by Anne Rivers Siddons. And I do have a copy of this, but it's not as cool as this edition. So I picked this one up as well even though it's a bit beat up. Uh, but yeah, I've read this one and it was absolutely brilliant. So I yeah, highly recommend if you have not read it. Orphans by Jean Simon. Three siblings, one chilling power. Sounds spooky. And on the back, it talks about terror, lust, and cold blood and murder. So, sounds like a great combo. Okay, if you're still here, we've only got five more books to go. And I kind of saved the best for last. I mean, they've all been great, but these are some iconic paperbacks from hell type books. So, I thought I would save them till the end. We have... Rockabye Baby by Stephen Gresham with this guy and his wig and nurse's outfit and a creepy doll with a cracked face. It's just all going on. Classic zebra. Like, it doesn't have a skeleton on the cover, but it does have everything else. So yeah, that was a great find. Water Baby by Patricia Wallace. Skeleton Mermaid, what are you gonna do? I mean, apparently there isn't even mermaids in this one. <laughs> but again, classic zebra cover. It sounds brilliant. And I was just, yeah, super excited to find it. It looks wonderful. And then the last three are all J.N. Williamson books and they all have amazing covers. We have The Longest Night with, yeah, skull face and the mirror is metallic. Another sticker I need to get rid of. Uh, I think I heard that this one actually wasn't very good, but I mean, come on, I wasn't gonna leave it behind. Playmates 
and what an amazing cover. I just love it so much. Yeah, the lighting on the girl, the creepy shadows in the background and then the and then the title. Yeah, it's just all brilliant. So, yeah, this was another find I was very excited about and I think it's something it's another creepy children thing, I think, which, you know, honestly, you can never have too much of. And last but not least, Skeleton Jogger, It's Dead to the World by Jane Williamson. Yeah, what an iconic cover. It was another gasp moment when I recognised the title and snapped it up. And this one's in pretty good shape. It looks like someone started it but then didn't get very far. <laughs> so yeah, such a great find. I was, yeah, just absolutely stoked <laughs> to have found this and so many other great books at this particular sale. Okay, so that is everything. Yeah, I'm gonna need to uh, calm down a bit on the book buying uh, for a little while, I think. I need to reorganise all my shelves now and fit these in, but yeah, like I said, I'm very happy to add these to my collection, I'm very excited to read them, even though it's going to take me a while, but yeah, these all look awesome and uh, yeah, I'm excited to dive in. So if you have read any of these, please let me know if there are any that you would recommend. Uh, or if there are just any that sound good to you that you want to hear more about and you would like me to read sooner rather than later, then yeah, feel free to let me know and I'll see what I can do. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye!